So we are going to do the 2020 Amy 1 problem 14. Let P of X be a quadratic polynomial with complex coefficients whose X squared coefficient is one. Suppose the equation P of P of X equals zero has four distinct solutions, X equals three, four, A, and B. Find the sum of all possible values of A plus B squared. So let's take a look at each of the elements of this question here so that we get an idea of what exactly is going on. First of all, we know we're looking at a quadratic polynomial with an x squared coefficient of one. In that case, we can write the polynomial as p of x equals x minus r1 times x minus r2. Since we know the x squared coefficient is one, where r1 and r2 are the two roots of the quadratic polynomial. So we're basically just factoring it based on the roots. We're looking at the equation p of p of x equals zero. What does that mean? Well, we're taking p of some input and getting zero, which means that this input p of x has to be one of the roots of the polynomial. So p of x for these solutions has to be either r1 or r2 so that we get an answer. That has to have four distinct solutions. But remember, a quadratic equation is describing a parabola. So if we look at the graph of any particular quadratic equation like this, for any particular output value that we want this parabola to give, there are only up to two ways for that to happen. For example, if we want this y value, say it's equal to three, we can choose the input value over here, or we can choose the input value over here but there are only ever going to be two ways to do that. There will never be three or four. So let's think about what it means for there to be four distinct solutions to this equation. First of all, we know that there are two different things that can be the output of P of X for us to get a solution. It can be either the first root or the second root so that when we plug it into this quadratic, we get zero as the result. So we have two possible roots so if these are the only two ways to get to the solution, and we have four distinct solutions, how exactly are those solutions gonna be split up among the roots? Because if we were looking at an arbitrary function instead of just a quadratic, we could have all of the inputs here, P of X of the solutions, being equal to R1. But because we're looking at a quadratic polynomial, we can't have four different inputs give the same output because we're looking at a parabola. We can only have up to two. So if we have two possible roots, we can't have three of these values here going to one of the roots because this quadratic can only give us two different inputs to one output. Instead, we have to split it up so that two of these inputs go to the first root and two of them go to the second root. So we know that two of the solutions go to each root. With this piece of information, we can start actually doing some computations to figure out the answer. We know that the solutions are three, four, A, and B. In this case, A and B are pretty much interchangeable. They're just our unknown values. But three and four give us a little bit of freedom to think about different ways to approach these solutions. One possibility, if we want two of the solutions going to the same root, is that P of three equals P of four. And then P of A equals P of B. This is one way for us to split up the roots. An alternative, which we'll look at later, is to have P of three equal P of A and P of four equal P of B. But in either case, we need two of these four solutions mapping to the same root. Let's look at this case to start off. In this situation, we can actually plug in P of three, P of four, P of A, and P of B into this quadratic polynomial and use those results to try to get information about our final answer A plus B squared. So here I've taken our polynomial P of X and plugged in P of three and P of four and then expanded out those results a little bit. From here, in the case that P of three equals P of four, we can set these two results equal to each other because we know they have to have the same output. And that gets us this equation over here. Let's see if we can get some information from this. 
First of all, notice that r1, r2 is on both sides of the equation, so we can cancel those out. Then we want to try and isolate r1 plus r2, because that's some information we might be able to use later. If we subtract 9 on both sides, we'll have 16 minus 9 equals 7 on the right side. And then if we add 4 times r1 plus r2 to both sides, we'll have negative 3 plus 4 equals 1 times the quantity r1 plus r2. So our final equation, if we just solve this out for r1 plus r2, is that that equals 7. Now let's see if we can take this information and figure something out from the values of p of a and p of b. So now I've taken our polynomial and plugged in the values a of b, again expanding them a little bit so that we can look at them in terms of the roots. And then in this case we know p of a equals p of b, so we can set these two equations equal to each other. Now we can see again r1, r2 and r1, r2 are going to cancel out on both sides. From here, let's try to get r1, r2 all on the same side like we did down here. In that case, we can add a times r1 plus r2 to both sides. So on the right side, we're going to have r1 plus r2 times, if we add a on both sides, we'll have a plus a here, and then minus b from the right side from before. Then we can subtract b squared from both sides to bring it to the left. So we have a squared minus b squared over here. But remember, a squared plus b squared, that's a difference of squares. We can write that as a plus b times a minus b. And then we have a factor of a minus b on both sides. Again, we can cancel that out. And that gives us r1 plus r2, this right side here, equals a plus b. But we already know r1 plus r2 equals 7. And therefore, a plus b must equal 7 as well. And therefore, a plus b squared must equal 49. So that is the value of a plus b squared for the situation where p of 3 equals p of 4 and p of a equals p of b. So now I'm going to clear the board and we're going to take a look at the other case. So I've given us some space and written the first result that we got here of a plus b squared equals 49. Now we have to look at another case. Remember before we assumed that p of 3 was equal to p of 4 and p of a was equal to p of b. But there's another possibility that we choose two different outputs to be equal. Instead of p of 3 being equal to p of 4, we set it equal to p of a. And then we'll set p of 4 equal to p of b. Now you might say, what happens if we let p of 3 equal p of b instead? Well, the thing is we're looking for the values of a plus b squared. In this case, it doesn't matter which answer is a and which answer is b. So if we flip these two around, we're going to get the same possible value of a plus b squared because a and b are just arbitrary numbers. So we don't have to worry about which one is a and which one is b. This is our only other case. So I'll write out the equations where we have p of 3 equals p of a and p of 4 equals p of b, and we'll go from there. So I've written the two equations for our second case over here, and let's see if we can try to get some information from them. First of all, just like before, we notice that we can cancel r1, r2 on both sides of each of these equations. From there, we can try to isolate r1 plus r2 like we did before. In that case, we want to add a times r1 plus r2 on both sides. So on the left side of this equation, we'll get a minus 3 times r1 plus r2. Then we can subtract 9 on both sides to get everything else on the right side of the equation. So we have a squared minus 9. And we can do a similar thing down here on this equation. If we add b times r1 plus r2, we have b minus 4 times r1 plus r2. And then we subtract 16, so we have equals b squared minus 16. On the right side of each of these equations, we have a difference of squares. So we can write it as a plus 3 
times a minus three, and down here, b plus four times b minus four. In that case, a minus three and a minus three are going to cancel right here, and b minus four, b minus four are going to cancel as well. So then we have r1 plus r2 equals a plus three, and r1 plus r2 equals b plus four. Now these two equations might be useful at some point, but what we have to realize is right now we don't know what r1 plus r2 equals like we did before. So we need to try to figure out the value of r1 plus r2 so we can use that to solve back for the values of a and b that we actually want. In order to do that, we need to get a little more information about these two equations that we have here. Let's take a look at that first one. 9 minus 3 times r1 plus r2 plus r1 r2. This expression here comes from plugging in p of 3. And we know, because we're trying to solve p of p of x equals 0, that this value, p of 3, must be one of the roots of our polynomial. It has to be either r1 or r2, so that when we apply the polynomial again, we get 0 as a result. We can assign this to the value of r1, because r1 and r2 are interchangeable, so it doesn't matter which is which. From there, we can do the same thing for our second equation here, p of 4. 16 minus 4 times r1 plus r2 plus r1 times r2 equals, well remember, p of 3 and p of 4 this time are representing different roots. So if the first was r1, this one has to be r2 instead. What we can do is subtract this first equation from the second equation. And that's going to let us cancel the factors of r1, r2. And maybe we'll be able to figure out this value we're looking for. So if we subtract these two equations, notice r1, r2 is going to cancel out just like always. We'll have 16 minus 9. That's going to be 7. And then we have negative 4 minus a negative 3 gives us a minus 1, r1 plus r2, and that's going to equal r2 minus r1. From here, this is actually an equation that we can solve. And the reason for that is that if we expand this out so that the minus goes into the parentheses here, we have a minus r1 minus r2. Notice there's a minus r1 on both sides of the equation. Those two are going to cancel out. And we have 7 minus r2 equals r2. We can add r2 on both sides. So we get 2r2 is equal to 7. Or in other words, r2 is 7 halves. Now we can use this information, the value of that second root, to substitute into one of these other equations and solve for r1. So I'm going to skip the algebra from that. In that case, we get that r1 is equal to negative 3. And from here, if all we need is r1 plus r2, then we can just add these two up. r1 plus r2 is going to be 7 halves minus 3 is 6 halves, so we have 1 half as our result. Now that we know the value r1 plus r2 equals 1 half, we can actually solve for a plus b like we want. We know r1 plus r2 equals a plus 3, and we also know r1 plus r2 equals b plus 4. If we want a plus b, then we can add these two equations together. On the left side, we're going to get 2 times r1 plus r2, and on the right side, a plus b, and then 3 plus 4 equals 7. r1 plus r2 is a half, so 2 times a half is going to be 1. So a plus b plus 7 equals 1. Therefore, a plus b equals negative 6, 1 minus 7. And a plus b squared is negative 6 squared, which gives 36. So the two possible values of a plus b squared are 36 and 49. So our final answer, the sum of those two values, is 36 plus 49, which equals 85. 
So there are a couple things to take away from the problem solving that we did here. The first is that when we're looking at polynomials, it's almost always a good idea to consider what would happen if we express the polynomial in terms of its roots. In this case, because we talked about p of x in terms of x minus r1 times x minus r2, that factorization enabled us to do a lot of things with this equation that simplified our problem solving a lot. All that we had to do beyond that was look at the properties of quadratic equations to realize the different cases that we were working with. So we got to our answer just like this.